Hello, welcome to lesson two. Today we're going to be learning about logic statements. By the end of the day, you should be able to write a converse, inverse, and contrapositive of a conditional statement. Now, a logical, a logical argument consists of a set of premises and a conclusion. Each given statement is called a premise. The statement arrived at through reasoning is called a conclusion. Now, these four statements are going to be on your homework. So to copy them all down is not entirely. A conditional is a compound statement formed by combining two statements, a hypothesis and a conclusion. And by using the words if then, you don't always need to use the words if then, but usually it's an if then statement, such as, if I drive my car to Rosedale, then I will watch a movie. The converse is formed by switching the hypothesis and the conclusion in the original statement. The if and then do not move. So you'd say, if I watch a movie, then I drove to Rosedale. The inverse is formed by negating the hypothesis and negating the conclusion. In other words, not is added to both parts. So if I do not go to Rosedale, then I will not watch a movie. And the contrapositive is formed by negating both parts of it and interchanging the resulting negation. So if I do not go to the movie, then I will not go to Rosedale. So for notation, we uh, the if then, we can write P arrow Q. It doesn't look as like a great arrow, does it? Um, I'll put on a better arrow. If P goes to Q, that means if then. So if P, uh, that, this would be another way of saying if P is I study and Q is I get good grades, uh, P goes to Q would mean if I study, then I get good grades. So our conditional statement would be, if I study, this is a conditional statement. Now, another way to state statement converse, inverse, and contrapositive is if P, then Q. A converse would be if Q, then P. The inverse has this little symbol. And that little symbol, a little squiggly, means not. So if not P, then not Q. And our contrapositive is if not Q, then not P. This gets a little confusing, but after a couple examples, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. Now, these statements are not always true. We have to assess each statement to see how true it actually is. All right, so let's look at this. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Well, the converse, well, first let's do the P's and Q's. If P, then Q. So our converse would be if Q, then P. So we would write if the Q is they are congruent. Now we can't start a, a sentence out saying if they are congruent because they doesn't refer to anything. So let's, we know they refers to two angles. So we'll start our sentence off if two angles. Now we finish with the rest of Q are congruent. Then, the, now we can use they in the second part, are vertical angles. The inverse says if not P, then not Q. So we'd say if two angles are not vertical angles,
then they are not congruent. Finally, our contrapositive is if not Q, then not P. So not Q would mean, we'd say, if two angles are not congruent, then not P. So not P would be then they are not vertical angles. All right. Now it's good to assess which is true and which is not true. So first we need to know what vertical angles are. If I draw two angles, the vertical angles are angles that will be across from each other. So this angle here and this angle here. Now, uh, you may have learned this in middle school or some other location, that these two angles will always be congruent. So this statement is true in this case. If two angles are vertical angles, then they are congruent. Now, is this statement true? If two angles are congruent, then are they vertical angles? Is it possible for two angles to be congruent and not vertical angles? Well, if I have a, a triangle, these two angles could be congruent. Congruent means the same size. Uh, these two angles could be the same size, but uh, these are not vertical angles. So here, this one is false. The inverse says if two angles are not vertical angles, then they are not congruent. So if you take all the angles that are not vertical angles, is it, do all of them have to be different? No, that's not true. Now the contrapositive. Uh, is if two angles are not congruent, so if we have two angles that are not congruent, then they are not vertical angles. This one's a little bit tougher to think about. So think about it. You have two angles that are not congruent. Is it possible for them to be vertical angles? No, it's not. So this one has to be true. Because if they're not congruent, then they're, there's no way that they're vertical angles. All right, now I want you guys to take a second and see if you guys can do this on your own. So pause the video and see if you can do this. All right, hopefully you're done. If P, then Q. Now if an object is a rose, then it's a flower. So a converse would be if Q, then P. But would it make sense to say if it when we don't know what it is referring to? Not really, so we'll have to use this object. So if an object is a flower, then it is a rose. The inverse would be if not P, then not Q. So if an object is not a rose, then it is not a flower. Contrapositive, if an object is not a flower, then it is not a rose. All right, now let's take a look at this. If an object is a rose, is it always going to be a flower? I'll say true there. 
if an object is a flower, then it is a rose. Now, can we think of any counterexamples? Well, we just have to think of any flower that's not a rose. So there's a lot of things that flower. Um, you could say dandel dandelion. I think that's a flower. It's a weed, but uh, like uh, begonia is something that comes up in my head. Uh, peonies. Uh, there's a lot of different flowers that are not roses. So well, this would be false. Uh, inverse, if an object is not a rose, so if it's not a rose, then it is not a flower. Well, that does that's false also, because you can have a peonies, which is not a rose, but it still is a flower. So those are counter, peonies is a counter example for both of these. A contrapositive, if something is not a flower, so anything that's not a flower, uh, then do we know it's not a rose? Yes. That's true. Because if it's not a flower, there's no way it could be a rose. All right. Now, you guys can try this one again on your own and see where, where you're at. Now, it, it might help to just do this one out loud with the person next to you uh, if you don't need another example to write this down. If a triangle is isosceles, then the triangle's base angles are congruent. So isosceles means that two sides are the same size. Now, if those are congruent, does that mean that these two angles have to be congruent? Or the same size? The answer is yes. That's true. In an isosceles triangle, whenever you have these two sides being the same, the sides opposite of them will always be the same size. So the converse, if Q then P, if a triangle's base angle is congruent, does it have to be isosceles? Well, if we know these two angles are congruent, yes, it is true that it will have to be isosceles. If it's not isosceles, then the base angles are not congruent. That's true also then those angles wouldn't be congruent if these are different sizes. Contrapositive, if, it, if a triangle's base angles are not congruent, then it is not isosceles. That is also true. So in this case, all of them are true. Over here, it's true, converse and inverse are false, and the contrapositive is true. And over here, it's the same true, false, false, true. So what do we notice about the pattern? If the original statement is true, the contrapositive is also true. We call this the law of contrapositives. If the conditional statement is true, then the contrapositive is true. Now, the inverse and the converse, sometimes they're true and sometimes they are not true. All right, your homework for today is uh, page 7 and 8 in the book, 1 through 8. Good luck.